Hi, I'm Kendall Jafin, physical therapist here in Birmingham, and we're collaborating with... I'm Charles. I'm a health advisor here at Pack Health. Today we're going to talk about five exercises you can do to alleviate or prevent the incidence of low back pain. It's something that most Americans are going to deal with at some point. And if you have back pain, getting out of bed, on and off the pot, in and out of the car can all be difficult. And so hopefully we can demystify back pain and the things that you can do to help prevent it. What we're going to start with is a pelvic tilt. We'll show you a variation at the end called a pelvic clock. So Charles, if you'd lie on your uh, back, please. Good, so Charles is gonna lie on his back, knees bent. And here's the cool thing. With the knees bent, we already take some pressure off the low back, okay? So it's a good rest position. What we're gonna do is try to create a spine sandwich, all right? So from the belly to the back or the belly to the bed or floor, we wanna create some tension and, and compress a bit. So. Transversus abdominis right here. We want to activate the transversus abdominis. Pull in. Good. And as you flatten into the bed or the floor, you're going to squeeze your glutes. That allows you to posteriorly tilt your pelvis. Okay? So this is anterior tilt. This is a posterior tilt. And what Charles is doing a great job of here is that he's not using his hamstrings too much. He's really allowing his transversus abdominis and his glutes to posterior tilt his pelvis. Now relax for me. Good. Now, we want to hold that for five seconds, anywhere from three to five seconds, and if we can do two sets of 10, and we do that a couple times a day, what we're going to do is we find that we add some length to the lumbar spine. The lumbar spine is designed to be stable. Uh, unfortunately, our sitting positions put us in an anterior tilted position, which gets rid of a lot of, a lot of that stability and, and oftentimes lead, leads to pain. What we're going to do here, Charles, is that we're going to do a variation. Let's posterior tilt the pelvis, so we're going to rotate the pelvis that way, activating the transversus abdominis, squeezing the glutes, or activating your glutes, or buns, or biscuits, whatever you want to call it. And then now you're going to relax and take that rotation the other way. So we're going to arch that low back off the mat, or bed, or floor. And now let's reverse that again. Good. So what we're doing here, if you notice, is, if you notice here, Charles spine, the angle here changes, all right? Now let's go anterior, good. That's creating a lengthening and shortening across the lumbar spine. Now we have a knee to chest. And the idea here is to again, take pressure off the lumbar spine, all right? We can call that your posterior line or your posterior fascial line. Charles is gonna help us here again with this demonstration. Uh, so if you can grab your knee here, both hands, and just kind of pull, gently pull that knee to your chest that allows you to lengthen this posterior line here, decompressing the lumbar spine. Some people may feel this up into your thoracic spine. All right, and then release that leg back, and we're gonna do 10 of those on, on either side. Now, if you have knee pain, osteoarthritis, then you, you may not wanna grab the knee here. What you may wanna do is grab behind the knee with both hands. Let's show, let's show that. Good deal, and so again, you, Pull here, hamstring attaches here. You're gonna get a stretch through the glute and a stretch through the lumbar spine and then come back forward. Important to note here, if you've had a hip replacement, uh, it's a good idea to contact your, or consult your physician and physical therapist before doing this knee to stretch because of the amount of stress it places on the hip joint. Now a variation for this, uh, if holding the back of the leg is not, it, not enough, here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna take a towel, that towel is gonna come back here, behind the knee as well, and you're gonna hold on to it and use your hands. That gives you the leverage then to be able to pull this leg up and then back down without putting too much stress on this knee joint. Now we're gonna do the cat-cow progression. So Charles here will get on his hands and knees and we'll show you a variation later on if, you, if knee pain or some, something else prevents you from getting in that position. Good. So what we see here, we're gonna try to get a flat line here as much as possible, but we're not gonna be perfectionist about it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna empty the lungs and get into that angry cat position and lift. So you're trying to pull the rib cage down to this belt line. Good. And now we're gonna go into the pregnant cow position and drop. 
And I kind of say pregnant cow because it makes it easier for us to imagine this dropping and then let's reverse it. Good. And if you notice, Charles does a great job and reverse with his head in terms of trying to follow that arch. Good, now let's go back up into angry cat position and we're gonna try to look for a little bit more length here deeper into the lumbar spine, which would be really good. And then reverse that for us. Good deal. All right, so here's our modification for the cat cow. So if, you're, if you've got some, some knee issues that prevents you from getting in this position, we're gonna just step back off and so legs are gonna be fairly, fairly straight hands flat, and we're gonna do the same thing here where we try to get up into that angry cat position to really lift. Awesome, good job, and then lower. And you don't have to lift your heels, your heels can stay flat with this, but we're just gonna try to, again, lift the spine, that's your angry cat position that creates flexion, and then drop into that pregnant cow position for our extension. What we're gonna do now is a hip hinge or seated hip flexion. Let's think of it though more as a seated roll down. And we'll, why we're gonna do it that way is that we wanna try to get each vertebrae, each bone within the spine to kind of move well globally, all right? So our friend Charles here is gonna start at the top and we're gonna curl down, good, and feel each vertebrae just moving forward on the other, all right? And we're gonna roll down as the hands then reach for the ground trying to create a little bit of length. So this is flexion in the lumbar spine, the thoracic spine, and the cervical spine. And then to roll up, you're gonna tuck the pelvis underneath and you're gonna stack one vertebrae on the other. Good, awesome. And then let's roll down again, nice and smooth. We'll do 10 of these. And in doing those 10, what you wanna do is kinda take your time. You may not make it to the ground, which is absolutely fine, but what you wanna do is pay attention to how each segment moves on the other. Now we're gonna do a hip flexor stretch and we're gonna revisit the hip flex, what the hip flexors are a little bit. So they attach proximally or superiorly to the lumbar spine and then distally they're gonna to attach to the femur. So they really flex the hip or flex the trunk down if my feet were on the ground. Now, what, what do we do as a, a lot as a society is sit. Sitting puts the hip flexor in a shortened position. And then when you do try to stand, it becomes difficult to extend the hip, so you hyperextend your lumbar spine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at two variations of these stretches. Charles? He's, Charles is gonna start in standing, he's gonna put the left knee down and then step forward a bit with the right leg. That puts the left hip in a bit of extension. So basically we're stretching the left hip flexor. You're gonna shift the pelvis forward a little bit without hyperextending the lumbar spine. And that should engage your left hip flexor. You feel a stretch there? Good deal. Now, squeeze your left glute, buns, biscuits, whatever you wanna call it. Right? That increases the stretch on the left because it also gives a little bit of a posterior tilt to the pelvis. All right? Now, let's back up to that starting position. So this is a subtle move. However, it can be very, very beneficial. Um, you can hold this stretch for 30 seconds uh, and do that, repeat that four or five times, or if you cannot tolerate this, you can kind of just get into the position, so shift forward, good, and then shift back, good. And you may do that 10 times. Now the research, uh, current research shows that you, can, you should hold a stretch for about a minute before you start feeling any long-term impacts, but what we're going for here is not really stretching a muscle per se, but really trying to get some functional length uh, through that muscle. And that'll also take some pressure off the low back. Now we're gonna show you a variation of that hip flexor stretch. So let's say that Charles had some left knee pain uh, or he had a total knee replacement. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna stretch the same left hip flexor, but you're gonna take, take a step forward with your right leg, good. Let's keep that left heel on the ground, so that's gonna extend the hip. And same deal, we don't wanna hyperextend the lumbar spine, so we keep that belly button pulled in a bit. We're gonna activate the left glute. All right, good deal, you feel a stretch there. That's engaged. And so you can move in and out of that position. You may put a chair in front of you or use a wall in front for balance if, if you need to. Modify from that standpoint, but the same rules apply. 30 second hold or a minute hold, or you can kind of just move in and out of this position 10 times. 
So we've covered five exercises that you can do to alleviate low back pain or in some instances help prevent low back pain. A mobile spine is a young spine. And what you wanna do is not focus on sets and reps. Now, Charles did a great job demonstrating the exercises that we're supposed to be doing or, or that would be beneficial. But if you can do one repetition and that one repetition is absolutely solid and you feel that you've gotten some benefit from it, then do that. And then as you go throughout the day, maybe do rep number two and rep number three, just making sure the reps are really, really solid. If you've got some discomfort, you don't tolerate getting on your knees well, those types of things, just keep moving. Moving is what matters. And before you start any exercise program, whether it be walking, some of the exercises that we cover today, you wanna to contact your physician and your care team to make sure that you're not incre increasing your risk for injury. If you have any questions, be sure to contact your health advisor.